We hear God's voice in the Bible and in preaching, in music and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Habakkuk, the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what God will say to me and what will God answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous will live by their faith. Word of God, word of life. To honor the risen Christ in our midst, we stand for this reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of humanity came to seek out and to save the lost. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Well, this weekend, there is a whole lot happening in the life of the church. And perhaps the most obvious today is this weekend's commemoration of the Reformation. This is Reformation Sunday, the day Lutherans commemorate the date when the German monk and professor Martin Luther struck the dry kindling of reform in the Catholic Church. It is 505 years since the start of the Lutheran Reformation in Germany. God bless the world. That is half a millennia of Lutherans. <laughs> It's crazy. In the life of this local congregation, this is also a confirmation weekend where a number of our young people affirm the faith they received at their baptism some time ago. It's also another Sunday in our series, Never Too Far, um, where we're hearing in the, the insistence of Scripture that we human beings are never too far from God, and because of that, God calls us to close the distance with each other. Well, for my sermon today, I'm going to focus my attention on these young people sitting right here in the front. So if you came here today just dying to hear what Pastor Justin had to say about Zacchaeus or about 500 years of Lutheran history, you might have to come back another time. And I don't want you to feel cheated, especially if you only know a couple or even none of the young people who are confirmed here this weekend. I just want you to know this. Even if you do not know them, it is our church's practice to pray for every person baptized in this place. So if you want to know how God has been at work in our community over the last 14 years or so, you got to look at these young people. They are amazing, every single one of them. And they show us what God has done in the life of the faithful at our Savior's Lutheran Church. I want you to know their, their stories because these young people are literally the answer to our prayers. 
The faith they have, the faith they're growing, it's everything we have prayed for. And to know them means knowing how God wants us to live in the future. So, on to them. I'm going to start today with Emma. Emma, for, on your confirmation board, you chose one of the great verses in the Bible from one of the great verses, one of the great books of the Bible. You chose this verse from Philippians that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I say this is one of the great books of the Bible because this contains just one of the most important descriptions for what Jesus does here on earth. It tells us that Jesus emptied God's self to take on the human form to become one of us. St. Paul, the one who wrote that verse you quote, he's really clear about something. St. Paul believed he could do anything and everything only because Jesus became nothing. You pick this verse of strength, but it only works because Jesus became weakness. Now I want you to think about your family. I know you're really close. I want you to consider how you help each other be strong, have faith, support each other, love each other, come to church. It really works for you guys. And the reason it works is because you take turns being vulnerable. You know how to give something up to make someone else strong. Pastor Andy also told me how much he's enjoyed getting to see your joyful, playful side in uh, like youth group the last couple of weeks, how much you love to laugh. And that's part of the same thing. You can't enjoy your life if you're too filled up with yourself all the time. Your laughter, your joy, your tenderheartedness, it comes from being open to others. And I want you to grow that. I want you to always bring your good humor to your relationship with God and with others. I want you to continue to build up each other. You don't have to be flashy about it. You just have to love your people and let them love you. Ella, your turn. Before I say anything else, I just want to tell everyone, including your fellow confirmands, that your board was the best one. First place. And it has nothing to do with the fact that you named Pastor Tim, Pastor Randy, and me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am honored that you would include us. Thank you. It was not a requirement. In your faith statement, you write that you believe being a Christian isn't just a thing we do on Sundays. Church happens everywhere. And then you chose two parts of your life to show us a bit more about yourself. You picked Britza, your dance studio, and your job at Trucks and Trikes, the daycare where you, where you spend time working with little kids. Now here's what amazes me about you. You say church can be anywhere, and then in both your explanation for these two things that you love, you show us how you live your Christian faith. You say that you praise God by dancing, and you quote Psalm 149 where it tells us that's what we should do. I can tell you I've never praised God through dancing. <laughs> and no one has praised God by watching me dance. But dance is maybe the most amazing way to praise God because you use your whole body, yourself, your mind, your breath to praise God with, when you dance. So yes, Keep praising God through dance. Make it beautiful. You also wrote that you live out your faith as a child of God at daycare by helping each child feel like they belong and by teaching them how to live as good little citizens of their good little daycare society. You may not realize this, but this is so incredibly Lutheran. It's Lutheran through and through. Because from the start of our denomination, 500 years ago, Lutherans have done what you do where we talk about what we talk about all the time at OSL, you, they connect faith to everyday life. If you dance, find God in your dancing. If you go to school, find God in your studies. You're living it out. I hope you do that forever. The fact is, when you get a little older, sometimes you end up doing things you have to do rather than things you love to do. We don't always love our jobs or our responsibilities, so we tend to forget that we should find God even in our everyday responsibilities. We look for God like in the best parts of our lives, and we come to believe the menial parts of our lives or the boring parts or the dirty parts, those have nothing to do with God. But Lutherans look for God in every part of their lives. Like even, you, you might even say that Luther could find God while changing a diaper. In fact, a Lutheran did say that once. Martin Luther, the very monk and professor and priest whose name our denomination bears, in 1522, before he became a father himself, Luther wrote that when a dad changes diapers, God, all God's angels, and all God's creatures smile because the dad does this out of Christian love for the child. Ella, I wish every person here could know God like you do, every single one, because then they would recognize that they serve God, maybe even when they dance, especially when they make a child feel at home.
For our next confirmand, I want everyone here to imagine one of those very tiny peppers. You know one of those ones that's really small and candy colorful, like a warning? That's Hannah Nesdal. <laughs> Hannah, I have long experience with your spiciness and your verve, your ferocity and your intelligence, and I am glad God made you spicy. Because we have to have some kick to deal with this crazy world. And that's what you notice on your faith board. You notice that life just gets crazy sometimes. People of God, you may not realize this, but young people are horribly stressed out about the state of the world. Adults like us have done a whole lot to make this world a bonkers place. And Hannah, we're giving this mess off to you and to your friends. And you grow up knowing the stress and anxiety and craziness of this world we have made. But... You also mention on your board that you like coming to church because at church, you hear about the interesting and insane things that God did to save us way back then. The insane things that God has done. You say that more than once on the board. God did some insane things in the Bible, people. Have you read it? We get so familiar with these stories that sometimes we forget that this stuff is crazy. The whole idea of our faith is insane, that God would save the world by becoming a person and dying on the cross. That's just nonsense. But that's actually the point. That's what St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, that God chose Christ crucified to show the power of God because God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The writers of the Bible, those first believers, they thought their world was crazy too, and they they thought that if God was going to any, get anything done in this kind of world, God had to out-crazy humanity. God had to do something audacious and unexpected. Hannah, you have the courage and the power to work like God in this way. You don't have to be crazy to get attention. You don't have to compete with anyone to get views or upvotes or likes or anything else, but you should always use your platform and your power and your privilege to fight for those who have no voice. Use your audacity to force the people in power to change this world for the better. You've been doing this since you were young, so keep going. Roar like a lion because God roars with you. Eilina, even if most people don't know all of your confirmands, you know, they might recognize you. And it's not because of your hair. It's because you read for us on Sunday mornings. Hannah, you've done this too for us before. And you're a good reading. I look forward to hearing you read, all of you, on Sunday morning. Thank you for contributing your gifts to our worship life. Reading in front of the congregation takes some guts. But this is what we might expect from you. Anyone who looks at your faith board will notice that too. You've got the Lutheran spirit, my friend. <laughs> because you've absorbed what Lutherans call the theology of the cross. In this Lutheran handbook that we give out to our kids, it, it's got like two pages of warnings about the theology of the cross thing. It's really complicated stuff, but you captured the spirit of it in your, on your faith board where you wrote, I believe God loves us like a parent. When we are suffering or sad or unkind to one another, God is suffering. That's theology of the cross. You write that being a child of God means going beyond tolerance, which is a word you hate. This is what she writes. Because if you tolerate something, it basically means you're just masking your distaste and your disgust. You're not willing to notice, recognize, and appreciate the differences that make people special and wonderful. And then you have this great meme from Jesus where Jesus says, love one another. And the people say, but what if they're immigrants or gay or poor? And Jesus says, did I stutter? I love it. I love it. Jesus didn't stutter. Jesus has no place for our poorly masked disgust. None. Jesus has no place for our tolerance because Jesus told us to love and Jesus didn't stutter. It takes guts to live like that because you have to boldly embrace your calling to defy powerful people or family members or loved ones or close friends. You have to defy them to make sure that everyone can feel welcome and loved. And you have the awareness and the intellect and the sensitivity and the power to make this place a welcome place for people who feel like they don't belong. And you have the faith to undermine any part of the church that would stand between the people who need to hear God and the God who's reaching them. So keep doing that. Challenge, create, welcome, and draw the circle wider until this is a church bursting with people who finally, for the first time, have discovered the true love of God that will never abandon them. That's all of our jobs. And it comes natural to you. 
But now I have a challenge for you and for all of you as you do the work of God. You ready? Takes even more guts. In the course of this work that we share, after we have polished our armor and hardened our heads and fought the good fight, there sometimes comes a day when someone fires an arrow at us, a nasty letter or a rough phone call or an act of betrayal, and it goes straight through every bit of armor we think we have. It will hit us in the place we did not know was so tender, so sensitive, and we find ourselves suddenly quivering with weakness and doubt. We feel everything we have worked toward pop like a balloon. We feel defeated and meaningless. Eileen and I tell this to you today, but it applies to each one of you and to all of you as well. In that moment, we have to remember that the same love that pushes us to draw this circle wider even encompasses our enemies. And we cannot continue the work of loving everyone until we figure out how to love those who harm us, too. So there you have it. These are just some of our confirmands who bless us this year as they affirm our faith. If you want to know the rest of their stories, you can pick up a copy of this sermon and read what I say about every student, or even better, just look at their faith boards. They're right outside. See what the students say about faith for their, in their own words. They are amazing. You are amazing, and we love you so much. This isn't graduation because you're never done learning about God. This is just the time to start taking all these tremendous gifts that God has given you and put them to work for the sake of Christ's goodness in the world. You are not the future of the church. People say that all the time about young people. They're the future of the church. That's ridiculous. You are the church right now. You are the very presence of God's work among us, all four of you. You may not always feel special. You may still be trying to figure out yourself or understand who you are. But each one of you provides a different vision of Christ's work in the world today. And God wants you to use today and tomorrow to show God's love in this place. Thank you for blessing us this way. Now get to work in this place and bless it because it has nurtured you. And also go from this place, from this moment, to fearlessly do God's work for the rest of the world. God's blessings be with you. Amen.